Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 6 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where I've just been doing a little bit of mining uh, down in my mining caves, and I'm at Y level 15. Uh, and the reason I'm at Y level 15, yeah, I guess I could snag this lapis real quick, is I want iron, primarily. Uh, and a little bit of coal probably wouldn't hurt either while I'm here. Just a smidge. I'm gonna have to find some room in my inventory to make coal fit, but I think I can do that. Yeah, it works. That works. Um, so why am I hunting for iron so much? I have an idea. I think I can make an early game nuclear reactor using extreme reactors. And I think that it's going to be a good use for a current stage of development. It's episode six and I'm building a nuclear reactor. I think I can do it though. Because I said to myself, I don't want to do lava again. Literally every series I've ever done has started with lava power. And I'm like, I got to find a, you know, more different way of you know, generating early game power. And Extreme Reactors um, has the basic reactors, which can only go up to a 5x5 five five size. That's a little expensive format now. But, but, what I will say is I can get something a little less large. Um, let's see, I would like you to focus on the iron. Yes, get the iron going and that would be cool by me. And uh, some yellowite as well. I should have some yellowium already processed. Beautiful. Um, so I think I think I can pull this off. I didn't relocate all my resources between episodes like I said I would because I decided instead to spend a whole bunch of time in my test world testing out whether it's going to be feasible or not for me to do a nuclear reactor. So I'm going to do the nuclear reactor and then we'll move our stuff, you know, between this episode and next. Or some time between an edit in this episode, like I'll break for a second come back and then everything will be moved something along those lines um the, the the main focus though is i'd like to get nuclear reactors up and running today and i think i can so a few things we're going to need to do to get started i'm going to have to get um reactor casings and what i'm going to build is a three by three by one internal reactor so that's going to be a five by five by three external which means the the outer casing will be five by five by three but inside the reactor it will be a three by three by one i'm gonna have five control rods i'm gonna have some graphite as a moderator maybe i'll see if there's something better i can make as a moderator we'll find out and then uh we're gonna automate it so that it automatically turns on and off as the internal buffer gets full or low and then that's pretty much the end of the sentence. That's that's it. That's all we're going to do. But uh, in order to do this, we're going to need a bunch of reactor casings. So I've calculated that I need roughly 60 of them. Uh, probably a few more because reactor casings are used as an ingredient in other components. Uh, maybe get a few reactor glass. We'll see. I'll fill it in. We're going to need a reactor controller, which uses casings. Mentioned them. Redstone, one diamond. I think that's it. And a little bit of yellow ingots. Uh, we're going to need some reactor fuel rods, which is going to be graphite and iron. Uh, graphite, by the way, is just smelted coal. So easy peasy. Uh, and you need that, by the way, for uh, your reactor casings as well. Uh, I'm going to get the solid fuel access port, which is just, you know, iron and wood and a little bit of redstone. So resource wise, I think I've got everything I need to pull this off. And we're going to have a couple reactor redstone ports to facilitate automation. Now, this is the basic tier. These reactors can only go up to 5x5x5, five by five by five, which I which is too big for me. I can't, I don't, even, I don't even want that much because any bigger and this would cost a lot. Um, and then we're going to use the Eulorium that we have as a fuel source to generate RF. And that should be pretty cool. And I think this is going to be a really nice early game way of generating power. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get started. I'm going to craft a bunch off camera, so I'm going to need a bunch of iron, as previously mentioned. Uh, as you can see, I'm processing all the iron I've got. But then I'm also going to need uh, this redstone furnace. I'm, I might make a second one to start generating uh, my... Or I might just tick accelerate this. I'm not, I haven't quite decided yet. I mean, I don't have a ton of time stored. I have an hour already, which is kind of surprising, but... Yeah, a little speeding up. Never hurt nobody. Except my RF generation. That probably was not appreciating all the speeding up. Um, let's real quick calculate what I need. So if I want if I want reactor casings and I need 60 of them times 4, I'm going to need 240 graphite. So that's effectively 4 stacks. I'm just going to smelt up 4 stacks of coal into graphite. And then if I need more coal, I'll go get more coal. And you can also smelt charcoal, by the way. But, you know, I think we're going to have enough. I think I've got the resources for this. And I'm close on iron, but not quite. But that's why I went mining for iron at Y level 16. All right, a little tick accelerating later, and uh, I think I'm ready here. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is snag the graphite that I've got, and then I'm going to I'm going to aim for making all the the, the reactor blocks that I'm going to need. So like if we just start off, I'm going to need a bunch of sand as well, probably a stack ish, probably a stack ish, because that's roughly what I need. I need 60 casings to build the thing, but I know I'm going to need a handful more just to make the controller and the control rods and other things. So I'm going to start with the stack and then we'll go from there. Cool. And uh, let me put away the 60 that I know I need. Just so we have them for later. Now reactor glass is what? It's just two glass around a reactor casing. So no cheaper to go that route. All right. So now let me math out what I need. I need a, I need a controller. Actually, let me put it in right from here. Uh, so we need the controller, we need one of those. We're gonna need five control rods, reactor fuel rods, and five reactor the control rods. So Eulorium reactor fuel rods and control rods. We're gonna need five of each. Because it's only one high internal, so we need so we need that. Um, I will need two solid fuel access ports. I'm gonna need an active forge power tap, and I'm gonna probably want three reactor redstone ports. So that's gonna be probably a healthy a bit more. So four, and then I said I need uh, five of these, right? So that's easy, because that's not blocks. I'm gonna need five of these, so I'm gonna need like another 20, so that's 24. I'm gonna need two more of these, so that's 32. So I'm gonna need almost another stack. It's expensive. I can do it though, I can do it. Let's start with three stacks of coal, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, be right back. All right, I think I've got everything we need. Let's find out. So I need the controller, uh, which is going to be... Oh, I need a piece of quartz as well. Quartz, 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 quartz. And I should snag some stone. All right, so my controller will be one of these guys. I think that should be fine. So you... And one diamond to get this ball rolling. All right. Check. Uh, I need five of these, which needs uh, some kind of glass. Got a little bit. I could smelt up some more. I'm going to have to go get more glass. At this point, I'm just curious as to how high this stuff will grow. All right, so I want five fuel rods. And five control rods. It needs five pistons. Cool. And then we're going to need our sand again. So I know we need 20-ish of these for this part. I'm trying to be conservative with the resources just because I really don't have that many. I'm cutting it close with what I've got. Uh, and then a solid access port. We're going to want two of these. So that's going to be... Oh boy, what am I short on? Probably iron? Yeah, still waiting on a little bit more iron. Okay, again, really cutting it close. One. Yeah, we'll get there. Probably enough glass for now. And I'm running out of time in a bottle as well. So hopper two. Fuel port will need two pistons. And a couple chests. I'll do it with this. That should be cool. So there's your solid fuel access ports. That's what's going to put the fuel into uh, the reactor. And then active forge energy port will need four more of these. I only need one of these, luckily. Now, how about the... Ah, that's going to be a lot of... Ugh, I wanted three of... I wanted three of these redstone ports. That's going to be a little expensive. But I can pull it off. Uh, what I'll do is just wait for a little bit more iron processing. You should have a buffer now. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, we've got the iron. I'm just waiting for it all to process. We'll get there eventually. So if I wanted this, I want 20 of these, right? And then that's your active port. And that, technically, that's enough for a manually controlled reactor. So I'm going to let the rest of this process off camera. And then, uh, I didn't want to put that in there. And then we'll uh, come back and let this, we'll, we'll get the automation going once the other stuff. I'm not going to sit here and wait for the processing of the iron. So that should be cool. All right, be right back. Now let's make a basement. So in order to do that, I'm going to want a couple ender pearls. I'm going to snag my reactor cases that I need here. And let's get some elevators, because you know that's my favorite way to handle a basement. Hey, you like my base? Looks pretty nice, right? Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We've all seen more spaces. I'm sure you've seen better ones. How's six sound? Does that sound like a good basement size? So to the left, we're going to go zero. To the right, we're going to go 16. To the up, we're going to go five. And to the down, we're going to go one. And that should, actually, the up should be four. That should be good. Cool. So now if I depth that to 16, is that right? Or do I want to go, yeah, 16 should be good. Goodbye. Ha, 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 ha. Looks pretty good, right? And then for you, we'll just make the depth of one, and then you'll void out that wall, and then we're pretty clear. Nice. And then our feral flare lantern that's up there will start lighting up the basement for us. Beautiful. Beautiful. So not bad. Uh, I will probably clear out a couple blocks deeper in here just so that we have this all well covered, but I mean, it's, it's not, not bad at all. So that should be my door right there. Yeah, that all looks good. Nice. Okay, then elevator can chill here and here. And we can get up and down nice and easily. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's get our reactor built in. So for our reactor casing, I'm going to stick this in this corner. And remember, it's going to be a 5x5 five five external. Okay. And the 5x5 five five external means that it's going to be a 3x3 three three internal. Put that away. So on the front, I'm going to have my reactor controller. Okay, and I don't think that has any sidedness to it. So it's just, you know, it's good. It doesn't matter what direction it's facing. Um, on the side here on the left, I'm going to have the input and output of my fuel. So you're going to be uh, input, not enough control rods. I guess I can't open your UI until the multi-block is formed. That's fine. Um, in the back, how do I want to have this? The back is going to have um, the, 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 the other things. And the side here is where I'm going to extract my power from. So this is where my active power port is going to go. And I assume that means it pushes energy out, like forge energy is supposed to be used for. Um, and then fuel rod in the middle. Controllers go on top, or uh, control rods go on top. And then this. Now, having air in between the control rods is not a problem. And you can kind of build this however you want. You could just have one control rod, and it would generate less RF. I'm doing it in the checkerboard pattern. I don't know, should be fine. Uh, and then if you want to be a little bit more efficient about it, which I do, uh, you can use moderators. So there's a bunch of moderators that you can get in the, in the mod, and I think one of the earliest and easiest available is graphite. And we only need four of them. So that's what we're going to get. 
Okay. And those four, I'm going to stick in between the, the fuel rods. So let me show you why I'm going to do that real quick. So if I close off this reactor, he should form into a multi-block now. And we're good. Cool. Now I just need some Eulorium. Now there's a lot of different types of fuel and there's a lot of different types of moderators. I'm starting with some extremely basic ones because what I want is a nice little nuclear reactor that'll generate, you know, a decent amount of RF for early game. So you're going to be uh, inlet mode and you over here can be outlet mode. So what's going to happen is the fuel is going to go in and it's going to be processed and, and burned up. And then we're going to get an output resource. I think cy cyanide or something like that. Uh, so here is where we're going to insert some eulorium and that's going to go in and it's going to fill up the internal buffer of the core. And then uh, the fuel rods are, there's five of them. So we should be able to just turn this guy on. And we're producing right now, uh, once the reactor heats up, not too bad. So we're using 0 0.40 millibuckets per tick. So our fuel is being burned up very slowly. And we're generating somewhere around 1.1, 1 1129 RF a tick. So I'm going to turn this off and insert my graphite. Now you can also use water here, but I'm pretty sure the graphite's better. You can also use diamond or gold blocks, but I didn't really quite have enough of either of those. So I figured graphite, probably a good way to go. Nice early game, simple way. So just putting the graphite in those air spaces uh, will make it be more efficient. So first off, we're using less fuel per tick, only 0.035 instead of 40. We're also generating a little bit more energy, almost 1300 RF a tick. Sweet. That's pretty cool. Now, the note here is that uh, it continues to generate power while it's cooling down, and it doesn't generate its full RF per tick until it's all the way heated up. So turning this thing on and off constantly would be bad in terms of efficiency. So what you want to do is use the reactor redstone port, which we're going to go make in a few moments here, and that will make our lives a lot better. Um, so let's get ready to do that. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got a few reactor casings left, which is nice. Uh, I'm actually going to take three reactor casings because I want to be as efficient as possible with this. So what we're going to have is I'm going to have a reactor casing here removed and here removed. And then I'm going to remove this one. And these are all going to be replaced with redstone controller dudes. Um, and two of them are going to handle sensing the amount of energy inside the reactor. And one of them is going to handle turning it on, on and off the reactor based on a redstone signal. Uh, so we've burned through most of our iron here. How'd we do? Not bad. A little over a stack. Beautiful. And we've got a few graphites left. Um, in total, I'm going to need 12, and I've got six. So I need six more, which is 24 graphite, uh, which I should be able to handle. Um, does that sound cool? Yeah, that should be cool. That should not be bad at all. See, I'm trying to be efficient with it because like I said, I barely have enough resources to pull this off. However, I do have enough resources to pull this off. So you and the sticks and the torches and... So I need three of these. Needs some stone. Cool. And then three more of these. So I can make this. And now I can make my three of those. Beautiful. Now we should get something to store our energy in. Um, so what would be a nice thing to store it in? We could get the cubes from, from mechanism. 
That wouldn't be a bad early game storage. We, we would have to start the mechanism chain. Um, I think there's there's um, there's there's the energy cells from power. We could get into power. Um, there's power cells from our tools. Those ain't terrible. Bit of redstone, eh, a little bit of some stuff. Redstone and diamonds makes one, so we would need four diamonds for that. Not, not, not terrible. Uh, redstone flux cells can store a million RF without any upgrades in them. That's gonna have to get into rubber. Boy, oh boy, what should I use for power storage? I don't even know. I'm not even sure. Let me think about it for a minute. All right. So what I want to do now is set up my logic gate thing. So reactor redstone logic, logic and logic. And I'll explain why I want three of these. So the gist is I want this to turn on when the energy buffer is low, but not immediately turn off as soon as it hits the threshold. I want it to stay on until it gets pretty high. So I'm going to aim for like when the buffer hits 25%, turn on. And then when it hits 75%, turn off. So what I think I'm going to start with is I'm going to quickly, I decided I am going to go with, with mechanism. Uh, for the power storage. I looked at a few things. I looked at flux networks. I looked at mechanism. I looked at this is the one I decided I wanted to go with. So what I'm probably going to do is make two metallurgic infusers. That seems like a good call. Uh, one for redstone and one for coal or charcoal. Doesn't really matter. Um, pretty sure charcoal works at least. We'll find out. And uh, I'm going to probably want to put this in here. So what I'm going to do... Let's get the, do I still have some pipes, pipes? What happened to my pipes, pipes? What did I do with them? I must have put them somewhere, right? Oh, there they are. No, I had a few. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly and temporarily place these guys here so that they can, you know, get the job done. So if I threw four, does charcoal not work? Does it have to be coal? It might have to be coal. Oh, did I crash the game? I may have crashed uh, something. Crashed. Oh, no, there we go. Just a huge lag spike. What was that all about? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, charcoal works. Okay, cool. And then a little bit of redstone up here. And uh, so what I want to get is basically, I, I want to get the advanced energy cube, which is the second tier, which is pretty easy. It's just redstone with iron. Um, and uh, we're going to need... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and four is 12. That should be fine. Um, and if we need to do a little bit of help there, we can. And then I think we're gonna want um, four of you. There we go. 12. And pretty close. And then you should be able to start smelting. Yep, I know. We're struggling for power. Not for long, though. Because I'm making a nuclear reactor in episode 6, y'all. There's two steel ingot, which is cool. Here's two more steel ingot which will be cool. Anything else I need to get this thing rolling? I don't think so, I think that's about it. Osmium, yep, I should, I should, I should be cool. All right, let's see if I can actually pull this off. Uh, so basic energy cube will need a bit of gold. I know I was forgetting something. I mean, I have plenty, so I'm not worried about it. So one of you. I didn't want six of you, but okay. That wasn't, I meant I meant to only pull out one stack, but oh well, life goes on. Um, I need four more energy uh, dudes then. So. Not the end of the world. Okay. 
So that would be you. And just to be clear, it would be, if I wanted to use those two, it would be reinforced alloys, which would be diamond dust. 20 millibuckets. Eh, I really don't have a lot of diamonds, so I'm not gonna do that. But I will do is get ready to upgrade my pipes. Um, so for now, put these in here and I'll have a use for them at the future. Probably I'll put them in here because this is my modded chest. Okay, so now for pipes, uh, let me get one more batch of these guys just so we have enough. Just because they're not too bad. And then I probably want to upgrade these because by default, I want to say the energy pipe can extract, what is it, 256 RF a tick? I think I can break these metallurgy infusers right now, by the way. But if we look at this, we'll see it. Uh, transferring 256 RF per tick. We're making more than that. So what we should do is we should get a basic pipe upgrade, uh, which looks incredibly cheap and easy to make. Although I am a little bit low on iron. Uh, and I might even upgrade that all the way up to improved. Because uh, with an improved energy, dude, uh, we can transfer 8,192. I want to say it's 1024 for the iron tier, but I think we're making more than that, aren't we? So we should probably do more than that. All right. So now what we want to set up is uh, the reactor sending power into our energy cube. Okay. So I'm probably going to want... So you're the reactor power tap here. I usually like you to be in the back. Is it gonna, I wonder if you can sit in the corner. Can you be in the corner? Or is that, is that, is that a no? I'm honestly not sure if corners are allowed. I guess we'll find out, right? Will you be valid in the corner? Because if you could sit in the corner, that would make this design a little bit easier. Only maybe casing may be used as part of the frame. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna be valid. I didn't think that was gonna be valid. Can you go in the top maybe? That is that is a possibility. Do you think he can go in the top? That would be that would be even cooler. Think he can chill up here? Alright, so graphite goes back there. Reactor frame here. That would be very cool if I could do that. I'm honestly not sure. He seems to be accepting of this. He seems to be accepting of this. All right. So then, um, then we're going to stick our energy dude here. Um, and generally speaking, what we'll probably have, I just want to make sure. Yes, this is where our energy is going to be coming through. I'm guessing I might want um, my cube to sit here right so that he can be accessible to me to charge things right because i'll use this as a charging station going forward so then what i'm going to do for the time being um at least until we get some kind of flux networks or something going is we will run energy into the left side uh we'll have it be input mode and the bottom will be output mode how's that sound is that not the left side it might be because i'm underneath and i placed it like wonky-ish. There you go. That's left now. And then you will be bottom and you'll let energy run out that way to machines. Okay. So then you're going to run and I should be able to use a wrench of some kind, including this wrench, to separate those. And then we do this and we do that. And now he should be draining the energy out of there and storing it right in the cube, ready to go. Cool. Now let's set up our logic gates here. Now this might need um, a little bit. Of space. Looks pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this guy to sense the energy stored and emit a redstone signal when below 25%. And I'm going to place redstone here so that it's obvious to see, but also because this is going to make more sense. This guy is going to emit a redstone signal when above 
okay? And you'll notice he's not emitting a redstone signal at the moment, obviously, because we're not above 75%, okay? I'm going to temporarily break this cable so that I can show how this is gonna work. I made a logic gate from RF Tools Utility. And the way I'm gonna set this up is as follows, okay? If you're receiving a signal on the back, which is B, okay, turn on the redstone signal coming out the front, which is A, okay? So if it's less than 25, turn on the redstone signal, okay? If this redstone signal goes off, right? So when it goes above 25%, it's going to be something like this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if there's no redstone signals coming in on any side, keep the previous redstone signal, right? So now when this turns off, he's going to keep emitting a redstone signal until such point that we get a redstone signal from here. And that's going to be redstone signal A coming in, and that is going to be off. So once you get a redstone signal on A, and we can demonstrate that with a quick button press, it'll turn off the signal, okay? And it'll stay off, right, until such time that the 25% goes on. Cool? Now, I will say that this is a strong output. So if you place the reactor port next to and or touching um, this guy, he will, he, will, he, will, he will cause him to go on, and that would not be good, okay? So what we want to do is avoid this block space, because look, he's actually... Uh, when he gets above 75, he will emit there, and we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is run this like so, and that is going to be cool. Now you're going to be configured to power on and off, set from signal, and save. And what this will do is it'll turn on the reactor once it's receiving a redstone signal and turn off the reactor when it's not. So watch. Boom. The reactor should be on right now, and we'll see that the power is going up. Once we hit 25%, this signal will turn off, but this signal will stay on because of the keep setting, right? Because we have it on keep. Now, once we hit 75% power, um, this signal will activate, turning off the main redstone signal, right? So that should be happening right about now-ish. There we go. And the signal will turn off, causing the reactor to cool down. But remember, during the cool down phase, it's still generating a little bit more power. But it, so it, so it ran, ran, you know, ran out at around 85% full, which is fine. Uh, and then once we activate the connection here, what's going to happen is once he drops below 75, it won't turn on the reactor until he goes below 25. Then the reactor will be turned on, and it will be kept on until such point that the reactor is filled up with energy again, which won't happen until the cube's full. So this should be a fully automated extreme reactor in episode six, I feel pretty good about that. What do you guys think? And we're generating 1.3, so like 1,300 RF a tick. Not bad at all for early game, right? It's not an, it's not like, you know, hundreds of thousands, but for episode six, it's pretty good. Uh, also, it's not me going into the nether and using a ranged pump. So that's, you know, a bonus. Uh, there's improvements we could do to this reactor. We could definitely make it bigger. Uh, we can make it uh, have better materials on the inside, which would make it more efficient and generate more RF. But we'll get to that as time goes on. So for now, uh, you know, we're and we've, we haven't even used any Yolorium yet. I, I couldn't tell you how much RF I get per Yolorium with this. Um, I mean, I guess we could see once he spits out a, a, a thing. But, like, where are we at here? We're still... We still have a lot of fuel in there, right? I guess, what do we need? A thousand millibuckets of fuel? Of waste, right? Before it before it consumes a fuel ingot? So, it's moving pretty slowly. Right? We've, we've done, you know, a hundred millibuckets. I would guess, right? Because what's in there right now? Fuel 20 buckets worth? Did I put 20 ingots in there? I feel like 30 ingots are in there. Yeah, I have no idea what the what the translation is. At that, I, I couldn't tell you. the The point though is is that we've we've already generated a little over four million RF, and we haven't even used a single Eulorium ingot yet. So I mean, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm down, and fully automated, by the way. Because as soon as we fill up this internal buffer, we'll have the reactor automatically shut off.
Not too shabby. And like I said, absolutely can be made better. But for now, I think it's wrapping up point. So Dowell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and we'll start. What I'll do is I'll move my base between episodes now. And then when we come back next time, we'll be ready to progress. And I'm going to probably try to get into a planet logistics because why not? I mean, I'll I'll want to at least start the Surtis Quartz growing and understand how that works in the new version of Minecraft that we have. And uh, then we'll see if we can actually do it. I probably need to mine a bit, though, because I use almost all my iron to pull off the shenanigans I just pulled off. Because, I mean, realistically, it was pretty early for me to do that. But luckily, I had the resources, so why not? All right, for now, take it easy.